one fundamental property that you will come across from time to time when you're studying about materials is that of surface energy. Surface energy. And as the name suggests here, surface energy is the energy associated with surfaces in materials. So, so nothing fancy there. So what I want to do here is sort of give you a broad qualitative understanding of what surface energy means and what does it mean for a material to have, let's say, high surface energy or a relatively low surface energy and how does that impact how that material behaves or, or interacts with its surroundings or the outside world. So, so let me quickly bring up a picture here. So this is a quick sketch that I made earlier. So it's a, it's a simple 2D representation of a small piece of material, uh, just a ball and stick model. So these dots in blue here represent atoms and the, the, these struts or sticks in red are, are the bonds that exist between the atoms. And as you can see, these atoms are arranged in a regular array. Uh, it's a hexagonal pattern. And if, when you look at this image, what you notice is that there are essentially two groups of atoms here. So one group of atoms that's completely inside the material. So let me quickly draw a boundary to separate these. So these atoms are completely inside and they have absolutely no exposure to the surroundings or the outside world. And then there are the second group of atoms. So these atoms are sitting right at the surface, right? And one key difference between these two groups of atoms is that if you pick an atom on the inside, each one of them is going to be bonded to six other atoms. So each one of them is bonded to six other atoms. You have six nearest neighbors. Whereas if you pick any of these on the surface, each one of them is bonded to less than six number of atoms. So if you take these guys at the top, this guy is bonded to four other atoms, but two of its remaining bonds are sort of left dangling or unsatisfied or unfulfilled. And these guys on the corner and on this side, these must be really unhappy. As you can see, they're bonded to two other atoms, but four of their remaining bonds are left unsatisfied or unfulfilled. So the reason these are unhappy, these surface atoms, because, you know, they are at a much higher energy level compared to the atoms in the bulk. And the reason they are at a higher energy level is because you actually have to spend some energy and break bonds to create a new surface in the material. So that energy that you spend in breaking bonds is the energy associated, the extra energy associated with these surface atoms. So the way surface energy is defined it as work done or energy spent work done per unit area per unit area to create a fresh new surface in the material to create a new surface in the material so that's how you define surface energy so if you look at the diagram here, you could think of it as a loaf of bread or, or a block of metal. Just say, let's just say it is a loaf of bread and you're using a kitchen knife to make a cut. So let me draw a kitchen knife here. So you exert some force, downward force, and you work your way down and you break all these bonds on your way down. Let me just take an eraser and break all these bonds. So what you have done in this process of breaking bonds is if you, you've created two new surfaces in this in this loaf of bread. So if you made another cut, you, you have two more surfaces and, and so on and so forth. So the question here is, is the energy that you spent here in making this cut in this loaf of bread, is that energy exactly equal to the energy of two new surfaces that you have formed here? So think about it. The answer to that question is mostly no, except in, in some really rare situations. And those situations are not going to be possible or in real life scenarios. So those rare situations are where you are making this cut really, really slowly. You're breaking these bonds extremely slowly and there is absolutely no friction involved and you're taking enough care not to impart any extra energy to these atoms and molecules around or, or the air molecules in the vicinity. And so in those rare situations, and these are actually have a 
term for these processes. They're called reversible processes where there is no friction involved. And we'll talk about reversible processes later in a lot of detail. So in, in, in those rare situations, the energy that you spend in making this cut is going to be exactly equal to the surface energy of these two new surfaces that you have created. But in all other situations, which are real life situations, the energy that you spend is going to be much higher than what is exactly required to break these bonds. So where is that extra energy going? That energy is going to be dissipated as heat. So there is some heat coming out of this. So what's essentially happening is when you're working your way down and breaking these bonds, you're not only breaking these bonds, but you're also imparting some extra kinetic energy to these atoms and molecules around and also the air molecules in the vicinity. So these atoms and molecules start jiggling really fast. Uh, with this extra kinetic energy that they have and you could have a local increase in temperature here but it's hard for you to detect this increase in temperature because as you can imagine you're not spending much energy in the first place to making to make a cut in this loaf of bread right so the amount of energy that gets dissipated as heat is not much either so the, so as a result the increase in temperature here is quite negligible but let's say this wasn't a loaf of bread, but it was actually a block of metal and you're using a hacksaw to make a cut in this block of metal. So in that case, the bonds inside a metal are much, much harder to break than inside a loaf of bread, right? So, so you, you end up spending much more energy to make a cut in a block of metal. So in the amount of energy that gets dissipated as heat is also much more. So there you can actually detect a sharp increase in temperature. So if you ever get a chance to touch or feel these freshly formed surfaces in a metal, they, they could be pretty warm or hot to touch. So now what happens when you have a freshly formed surface in a, in a material? So these atoms here that were once inside the bulk of the material and they were you know, really happy because they, all their bonds were fulfilled and satisfied. So now all of a sudden they find themselves sitting on top of a surface with their broken bonds and now they are at a much higher energy level than what they were before. So because of that, these surface atoms, depending on how high the surface energy is in that material, they have this strong tendency to combine and, and recombine and form new bonds with the atoms that they are exposed to, with the atoms and molecules that they are exposed to. That. So that's going to be the, the air or the moisture or the oil and grease that, that's present around them. So, so let me quickly show you what I mean. So all these are surfaces. You have, the, you have a surface here, 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 and here, and you have two more surfaces here. But I'm going to just pick this, this surface on this side because it's easier for you to, for me to show you guys. So, so they, they are going to do anything and everything to recombine and form new bonds with atoms and molecules around them, air molecules or, or, you know, oxygen in air or water in air. So, let me pick another color. So the reason I have different colors here is to show you, you know, the, a variety of interactions that these surface atoms can have, a variety of chemical bonds that they can form. And the eventual goal is basically to form all these bonds and reduce their overall surface energy. So that is, the, that is their goal. So for example, in metals, you have this piece of metal and there is a freshly formed surface here and the, the, so the chances are that these surface atoms here are going to quickly combine with oxygen in air oxygen in air and form this thin oxide film or what we call a post passivation layer so what's essentially happening here is these surface atoms are combining with oxygen and forming these new bonds and they are reducing their overall surface energy, reducing their overall surface energy. So I'm going to pause here and we'll talk more on this topic in the next video.